hope you're all doing well. Summer is here. I'm so excited. Mind you, it's a little cold here in Montreal. It is crazy. We had the hottest days ever and then all of a sudden it just came. This cold came out of nowhere. My husband told me that he went up north for a couple of days and he says it went to zero up there. I says, oh my God, I planted stuff in the garden. I says, I hope everything's going to be okay. If not, well, we're going to have to go to the store and buy stuff. But just wanted to show you what I normally do and why these foods and these things that I make are so important for our bodies. For instance, you know that we do a lot of sprouting. This tray here is just lentil. They're so delicious. You could put this anywhere, but the power of this food is incredible. It's basically a superfood, guys. It's just so good for us and so easy to make. Now, I have special trays, but you don't have to use these trays if you don't want to. You could grow this in a jar. I showed you how to do it. There's a video on it. Go check it out. The amount of nutrients you get with just a little handful of these sprouts, either in your salad. Last night I made a delicious lentil soup. It was so cold. I said, you know what? I'm going to do some lentil soup because I'm going to freeze my butt otherwise. And I just dropped a handful right into the hot soup and it just kind of wilted down. It still keeps all its nutrients as if it's almost raw. But these are important foods to have. So if you haven't started to sprout, I say go ahead and sprout. Now, kombucha is another thing. It's a fermented tea. These are all old bottles that I have. Plus, I have some that I bought myself. I just make them continuously. It is so good for you. It's a probiotic. Probiotics are very important for us. It takes care of our flora. And once that is healthy, the rest of you is healthy. We are what we eat. We are what we drink. Whatever you put in your body is going to be a reflection of what the outside of your body is. So having things that are fermented is no different than taking a probiotic pill, which a lot of people don't do, and I think it's important that you do. But by having these pro probiotic drinks, and it's really delicious. When I say delicious, you can make them in so many flavors, but by having these handy at home, you drink a bottle a day, you take your probiotics daily and it just keeps your inside healthy it really does so this is another thing that i continuously do i have already some in my i'm going to show you i already have some stored away here uh, th these are some of my pickling jars but i have bottles this one here is lavender uh, so i already have bottles there i have bottles here i've got more over here these are old bottles that i just reused and i'm bottling some more so this is continuously going in my house and all i have is one of these large containers uh, this is more than a gallon it's probably a gallon and a half if not two gallons but that's what i'm using to make my kombucha so right now i already have sugar in there and that's what's gonna feed my scoby and that scoby is going to take care of that sugar and later on i'll be pouring some green tea that i'm going to make and i'm going to fill my jug all the way up to the top here and you can see the top of my scoby is nice and white that means it's just remaking itself it's just this scoby just keeps going i've had this now it's over 14 years i do separate it and take some of it and put it in another jar I call it the SCOBY Hotel, and that's where I keep all my extra SCOBYs. But I put my sugar ahead of time. I really don't care if my sugar is mixed or not, because that SCOBY will eat up that sugar and ferment my tea without a problem. And it has a nice tangy, almost vinegary, but not very vinegary either, but it does have a nice tangy taste. And then how you flavor it, it's really up to you. I flavor mine. For instance, I've got rose water. I have, uh, this is pear flavor that I'm doing here. So I do have different flavors going. Uh, Erica's not crazy about rose water, so I made hers strawberry. So basically a little bit of strawberry juice. You can use juices. There's so many ways you can do it. You can use the fruit itself. Very easy to make. And again, I also have a video on how I make my uh, kombucha. But if you don't 
have a scoby and you say you know what i really want to try you could go out buy a kombucha for yourself and make sure that a kombucha that is a live culture that means it is not let me see if i could show you raw and living there it is make sure there's a kombucha that is not pasteurized otherwise it's not going to work for you and make sure it's the original flavor and not flavored you don't, you don't want any flavored kombucha when you're starting it and you could actually take a bottle or two split the bottle up add juice in both bottles to fill them up and let them sit and you're going to see it is going to start fermenting how do you know every once in a while try burping it and you'll hear the gas if you see everything bubbling up that's ready to drink be careful because with the hot weather sometimes they over ferment not that it's bad for you but you will get a mess so you have to be careful test it often and if it's not ready to drink let them sit a little longer maybe buy another kombucha split it half and half into another bottle or jar and put some juice in either one a little bit of sugar too i would unless your juice is very sweet i would always add a little sugar because that's going to help make that carbonation as you could tell, my bottles already are nice and carbonated. Uh, this one here, if I give it a shake, you'll see that it is nice and carbonated. So these are ready to go sit now and we will drink the older ones first. But very easy to make and very delicious and good for you. Another way is making uh, sauerkraut. Very easy to make also. Uh, I throw, I cut up a cabbage and I throw it in a plastic bag that I have stored away. I wash my bags. I'll show you, I've got them hanging on my clothesline. And I don't bring bags home, but the ones I have are reused till there's like nothing left of them. But I just cut my cabbage, I throw it in a bag or in a bowl, sprinkle a tablespoon of salt on top of that, and just massage it until it just turns into water and very wilted cabbage. And then you put them in jars and you let them ferment room temperature so that means you're not going to put this in the fridge yet you're going to put this either in a cupboard like i put them where my dishes are and that's where i keep my put a little bowl underneath and that's where i keep it until it's ready to be refrigerated i do burp it every once in a while i have a little dish underneath just in case there's a spillover because it's happened trust me but you do want to burp it. I don't over ferment my uh, sauerkraut because Erica likes it more fresh than stanky. I guess you could say <laughs> stinky, stanky. Because uh, the older it gets, the more it ferments, the stronger it gets. It will ferment in the refrigerator, but it's a slower process. You'll probably end up eating it way before it gets very, very strong. But very easy to make. I also have a video on how to do that so good for you again this is another probiotic that you need to put in your belly it's important if it's not this you can use kimchi that's another fermented food that you can eat remember especially with the virus that's going around we need to be healthy on the inside if we're not healthy on the inside we're gonna get sick guys there is no doubt about it sick all kinds of illnesses can happen joints bones whatever is is hurting you it's because you're sick in the inside your body is a reflection of what's going in inside you eat well your body's gonna act well you eat bad your body's gonna react bad it's gonna give you pain it's not gonna make you want to get up in the morning i know personally if i eat good healthy foods my body just loves me. I get up early in the morning. I don't have problems getting up. I swing out of bed and I'm going early in the morning. By six o'clock, I'm doing things already. And my body does not show any tiredness. But just to say, I could keep going. I'm like the Energizer Bunny. I don't get tired. I could keep going all day long without sitting. The only time I sit is if I'm editing my videos. But it's important to put healthy stuff in your body. And these are healthy things that you should put in your body daily, guys. A little sauerkraut every day, either in a salad or just next to your plate, whatever you're eating in a burger. You don't have to eat a lot of it. If you eat it every day, you get what your body needs. So very important. So I'm gonna make more tea and I'm gonna fill up my jug, let it ferment for another couple of weeks. Depends with the heat in the house. We have air conditioned, so it, you know, it won't over ferment too quickly. But if you don't have air conditioned, 
it will start fermenting faster on you and just make what you need if you find that you have way too many bottles just let it sit it's not going to do anything it's not going to spoil and when you're ready you're going to start feeding the sugar and giving it your green tea and you're ready to go again today what i'm going to also do is i'm going to ferment some carrots i got some beautiful carrots that i am going to wash peel and then i'm going to grate them and i'm going to show you how i'm going to ferment some of these carrots maybe put some ginger and not only am i going to ferment ferment them but i will also pickle them later on so these are all things that you can put in your refrigerator have it ready like i said you could add them in salads you could add them in a on the side of your plate you could put it in a sandwich they're delicious they're great condiments to have and again full of probiotics so i'm going to get these clean later on and i'm also going to shred them i want them nice i don't want big cuts on this one uh, i have the ones that i they're like almost carrot sticks but i want these shredded almost like a slaw so i'm going to do this later on and i'm going to show you how easy it is to ferment my carrots okay so i used to add my sugar in my jar add my tea bags or loose tea whatever i have on hand let me put this carrot away first i used to dilute the tea in my hot water and then i used to put the tea bags and i used to get so frustrated when my sugar was like wasn't diluted enough i used to say oh my god it's gonna it's not gonna work it's not gonna work trust me you don't even have to dilute that sugar i throw the sugar straight in my main jar i showed you earlier and here all I do is have, I add my tea bags and I add my boiling water and I let it steep. When it's finally cooled, then I will just hold the tea bags in, put the water, uh, the tea in my uh, larger container and then add more hot water in the tea bags if I have to still keep filling my big jug because I know exactly how much sugar my jug holds otherwise if you get a scoby and a little starter there is a ratio how much sugar per how much liquid but because i know mine like the back of my hand i've been doing it for 14 years it's the same jug i lost a little spout that used to be in the front of that jug so now i have like a duct tape holding it and it holds my liquid in that's how old it is but very easy to do guys i know exactly how much tea but there is the measurement uh, I could write it down for you uh, on the side right here if you want to start from scratch how much tea you use how much sugar you use how much water you use with your new scoby and your new uh, starter and make kombucha guys you can buy it but it does add up I used to buy it in the beginning I said this is crazy oh my god I can't believe how much money I'm spending just on kombucha I mean it's so good for you Plus, it's so delicious and refreshing in the summer. I used to just buy it, but it adds up. Now it's not so bad. The prices have kind of come down. But when I started to drink kombucha 14 years ago, it was almost $6 a bottle. It was like this novelty thing. It was like, but it wasn't. This has been going around for a long time. But when people started to bring it into the stores, the prices were crazy. So, you know, a kombucha a day at $6, seven days in, you're paying quite a bit out of your pocket so i says you know what i almost swore <laughs> i gotta be careful what i say <laughs> he says you know what i'm gonna make my own kombucha and that's what i did so i started and i made my own scoby i didn't even go out and buy it okay i used to buy organic but you know what i just buy the cheapest tea bags i can get it's got no chemicals 100 percent natural i'm okay with it and this is like the, one of the cheapest ones I personally could buy and I put so many in I have according to what I'm using I use one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen I could even do fifteen if I want this is the green tea and then I use two tea bags but it's a darker tea and that's the way I like it but you could use all green tea your kombucha is going to be a lot lighter but it's still going to be uh, delicious no matter what 
You could always use just dark tea. It'll be more like a beer color. That's nice also. It's a stronger tea. Um, I want to try buying hops. I want to make it with some hops and see how that comes out to give it that beer taste. But very easy to make, guys. I just kind of throw this in, take the paper out along with a little stubby on the end. I try not to put any paper in. If I had the scissors on hand, I would just cut that off. But just throw in the tea bags right into my jar. And then I compost my paper, believe it or not. I don't even put this in the recycle, which is great because you do need to add sometimes like dry leaves and stuff in your compost. And this paper works just great. It's like putting uh, some dry leaves in my compost bin. It works. It works for me. Anyhow. So. That's how simple it is to just make your tea. The only thing is you don't want to put this hot because if you put it hot, you will definitely kill that scoby. That scoby is not going to like you. It's going to die. That thing's going to ferment. You're going to have this rubbery, wobbly thing in your jar that won't do nothing for you. It will probably make mold. That's what it's going to do because it's going to die. But this is not going to go into the jug until later on tonight. Now, I know I've made kombucha videos for you, but it's it's not showing you how to, well, yeah, I'm kind of showing you, but it's more for me telling you how important it is to have probiotics in your body. Instead of buying it, make it and enjoy them every day. There's so many things that you can make that is so good for us. And, yeah, it's just good for us. Okay, in goes the hot water. I'm going to fill up my jar, or as much as I can fill it up for now. There we go. Now we could put, I'm going to put more water to boil. And I am going to put, I wouldn't uh, tighten it. It will tighten on its own, trust me. With that heat, this is just going to like suction everything up. So you don't even have to put this if you don't want to. I'll do it because that's who I am. Okay. And that goes off to the side. And that's going to cool off. And like I said, I'm going to take that liquid, put it in my big jug. The sugar is waiting for it. And then uh, only t tonight, this has got to get cold. And then I leave the tea bags there. If I need more liquid in my jug, because I know exactly how high I want it. My measurements are perfect then I will make a new batch just by leaving those tea bags, the same tea bags. I will add water to it. It'll make a weaker tea, but it's still a tea. And then I'll add it when that cools off to my jug and then just let it sit and ferment. You don't have to do nothing. You just have to sit and wait for it. So that's how easy. Now I'm going to peel these carrots and then we're going to make some fermented carrots and it won't take long. It'll take up to three days to ferment. And then we're going to pickle them a little. And we're going to have the most delicious fermented pickle carrots that you can put in your burger this summer. And you're going to love it. And you're going to say, Connie, I love you for showing me how easy it is to get healthy foods in our body. So don't forget, these are foods that it's a must. You must, must, must put these foods in your body. You need to keep that inside of yours healthy that's the only way you're gonna not get sick guys you got to be healthy on the inside to reflect the healthy outside so I'm gonna see you in a bit guys all right you hear my daughter hammering in the background she's making she's got a my husband buys Italian bitter and it comes in a little plastic bottle. So she's turning the plastic bottle into a watering tool to water her veggies. Okay, sorry. I'm using just paper so it's easier for me to, uh, to pick up my stuff and then throw it in the compost. It goes in with the paper. It's like a lot easier for me. This is great if you, like, especially around the fall time. I mean, I'm making it now because, you know, summer's here and 
if you want to grill a burger or something a vegan burger of course right guys we don't grill anything but veggies and vegan burgers in this house it's nice to have some of this delicious fermented food that is so easy to make but also easy and delicious to have in the fall the winter this is food that you should always have in your refrigerator now if you don't have a big refrigerator you don't want to go crazy and make a whole bunch and then you have no room to store it you can store it outside the refrigerator in the fall and winter you could put it in a cold room if you have like I have a garage that I don't heat because I like to put a lot of my food there but yeah you can leave it out at room temperature but it'll just keep fermenting that means it's only gonna get stronger and stronger which is a good thing if you like it that way like I ferment hot peppers and then I make a delicious hot sauce I have a video showing how to do that I made them made red sauce red hot sauce I made green hot sauce so I can't wait to get more hot peppers to do more because we use a lot of it especially on rice yum yum so good so I'm gonna push this aside for now I use my mushroom hunting knife Once they're washed, if there's a little bit of skin left, I really don't care. We're not very picky like that, but if you don't want any skin, make sure to clean them as well as you like to clean them. Beautiful. Come, show, I'll show you what my daughter just did. Erica, you're squirt on the carrots. She, this, this is, uh, my husband loves this stuff. Um, and it comes in a plastic bottle. But what she did was she put all tiny holes on the top, so when she goes to water, not sure if you can see it. It's like she has her own little spray system. And she could water her garden that way. Or my carrots. Right now. So that's a good way to recycle some of this plastic. And they last a long time too outside. So, But my husband is into that bitter now. And he keeps bringing home those bottles. Oh, God. It's like the more I try and fight plastic, the more plastic shows up. I don't know why. Okay, so... All right, I'm just going to do a little batch to show you, and I'm going to wash these, and then I'm going to make a lot more for myself because I have the carrots. But just to make a small batch, I'll show you how easy it is to do this. I might need more carrots. You know what? Let me just do a couple of more carrots. You can always jam it. I love to jam it in my jars. It's like the jars that never end, guys. When I make kimchi or sauerkraut or the carrots like this, I just jam them once they're fermented and everything, and I'm storing them away. Ugh. I just jam them, and it's like you never, they never end. It's the jar that never ends. It always gives. Hopefully, I should have enough to make a jar for you here. Plus, my refrigerator is so packed right now with all other stuff that I put in there because I cook my beans and I put them in jars. I cook more than just what I need. I put them in jars so this way, and they seal so they last a long time in the fridge. They probably would last outside the fridge too. I'd have to test that and see what happens. But you have to make sure they seal good, otherwise you will spoil them. But I do cook enough beans that will last me for a while, and I keep those in the fridge. I do kimchi, sauerkraut, you name it, it's in jars. So my jars, my uh, refrigerator is like crazy right now. Okay, so this is how easy it is for me to clean up my mess. Wrap. And this goes straight into my compost bin. Boom. Done. Life is easy. Life is good. Okay. So I'm just going to wash these carrots and then I'll shred. Okay. Okay. So when I shred these, I'm using an old-fashioned grater, cheese grater. This is no longer a cheese grater. Well, sometimes it's a vegan cheese grater. But it's an old-fashioned grater. And I kind of make my shreds 
so I hold my carrot not this way but you can because this way you're gonna get very small shreds but I want them just a little long so I kind of take my carrot and I shred it longer on the long side so it gives me still short See, they're still short, but they're not overly, overly short. But if you want, you can mince this up. It still works. You still get the end result. So that's really up to you. And if you have little bits and you don't want to, like, you know, lose a fingernail or a finger, I throw them on the side and what I do is I add those in the freezer for soup or broth. That's how easy it is to make this recipe guys. It's just a matter of grating those carrots. This is just so much easier. Uh, I also make the ones where I make carrot sticks so it takes a long time for you to sit there and cut these carrots into tiny little sticks. But you can do them that way also. You could pretty much ferment everything. This was a way of storing food, guys. Yes, they didn't have a lot of refrigerators back then. But they did have like a, a root cellar. And they would keep their jars there. And underground, it kept everything nice and cool. So this was a way of storing food and not letting it uh, go bad. You could also, like I said, keep it in your house. But if your house is too hot in the winter... They will start fermenting like crazy and you know I'm not sure how you how strong you like your fermentation okay so that carrot goes there great way to store food I also started to um, I'm gonna take you to my garage later on because you're gonna see what a mess that is uh, I started to prep food now it's a couple of years right Erica when do we start prepping hey we started to prep a couple of years back and we started to, we always bought in large amounts for a long, long time, 14 years we've been doing this since we basically turned vegan because, you know, we ate vegetables before, but never like we eat vegetables now. But since we turned vegan, everything is bought in large amounts. Like I bought a case of my chicory, which is bagged and in my refrigerator downstairs. Thank God I have that. But I buy peppers in large, large amounts. I buy everything in large amounts, guys. But we never prepped. That means storing it away so we would have it for a long time. And that's something we've been doing now for a couple of years. And I put things in mylar bags. And I buy like hundreds of pounds of rice and flour and semolina flour and lentils and beans. And then I put it in marlar bags, in bins. And then, because I don't have enough bins, I've been putting all these packages in boxes and numbering them and keeping them in a book, believe it or not. Okay, let me make room for these. So I'm going to throw these carrots right there. And if there's a little bit of water, that's okay too. It doesn't matter. And we're going to continue with the carrots. Um, so it is a mess. But what I started to do is, for instance, I just bought a new box. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been shaking you guys, eh? Maybe I should shred first and then talk. Okay, let me shred these carrots and then I'll tell you. Here are my beautiful carrots, okay? I'm not going to ferment these like I would ferment uh, my peppers where I fill my jug with water and salt. I'm going to ferment these like I'm going to ferment my sauerkraut so i'm just going to add salt right to this and basically when i have about this much of carrots i use about a tablespoon of salt and this is what's going to ferment my carrots my hands are clean guys and you basically want to massage it in and this will make some water so we're just going to let this do its thing while I do my ginger. Because I did say I was going to add ginger to this. Now, this is so good, you're going to wish you made more than one jar. 
I'm just going to put these over. Now you can either grate your ginger, uh, which I might do. Let me see. Let me just wash my hands. And you know what? A lot of people say, how do you know how much to put, how much to do this? Well, when you cook, I'm going to be doing a whole series on my Patreon, and it's going to be how to put intention in your food. Like I say, there's a little witch in all of us, right guys? And what we do is when we make anything that we create with our hands with love and we have a good intention, it just works. It's like magic, guys. You're going to make the best food for your family. You're going to make the most delicious food for your family. But you got to do it with love and you got to put the intention in it. So whatever you do, always cook or prepare your food with love and compassion guys so right now I am gonna get some ginger and I'm gonna add a little bit of ginger to this and if you want you can also look how small organic ginger is they're just like tiny little bits let me see maybe I will try and grow my little my little sprouties we'll see what happens we're gonna put that in the garden okay Here's my ginger, skin and all, guys. This is organic ginger, so I'm not worried about it. There we go. And I might just cut this up in little bits and add it too. So I didn't put that much. I put a small, there's a small amount of ginger, but I do have a small amount of carrots. Now I'm doing just carrots and ginger. But we can actually add onions to this if you want. That's really up to you. Okay. It's really up to you how you want to do it. Another way of doing this is like yesterday I got really lazy. I just threw all my uh, cabbage in a plastic bag that I have washed. And I just kept the bag on the counter. And I, every time I would walk by, I'd give it a squeeze and I would give it a massage. And yeah. It works the same. Look at that. Do you see how much water it's already lost these carrots? So this is going to be the same system like when I do my sauerkraut. I have other recipes like daikons, they're slivered, very good to have to put in burgers or just in salads. They're so good in salads. And how fermented is really up to you. You want to ferment it for a long time, then you do it for a long time. You want to do it for just three days because you'll get to taste it. You'll say, oh, this is tangy enough for me. Then that's fine. Just take it and put it straight into, put it straight into the uh, refrigerator. Tap it up, and in the fridge it goes. So I'm just going to leave it here, let it do its own thing. The salt is just going to keep breaking it down. It's going to make this carrot nice and soft. Eventually it will get a little crunchy again when we add the vinegar, but that's later in a few days. Right now we just want to get this fermented. So there we go. Wilt it down. I'm going to see you after this is ready to go into jars. And then we're going to put this to ferment. So I'll see you in a little bit, guys. Fermenting is a way of preserving our food. I did mention earlier, a long time ago, they didn't have refrigerators. So they would take this food, they would ferment it, and then they would store it away. Either in a cool cellar, like a, a root cellar. Uh, they would have a place where they would keep jars of fermented food or in a section of their house where it would not be as hot and they would keep this all winter long. They needed food. They would grow their food in the summer. Uh, they didn't have grocery stores at the corner. They, If you want to go to a grocery store, you have to either walk there or you would take your ass, your donkey, whatever you had, and you would take days to get there. If You know, you know some places even further, depend where how far you lived. That's what they did. They did this back in Italy. They did this back anywhere. This is how they preserved food. They would take their beautiful pro produce and some they would eat fresh and the rest they would 
just prepare it and put it straight in jars after they've uh, fermented it and they would have it all winter long and don't forget guys just because we're adding salt to this it doesn't mean that we're taking away its nutrients everything is there when you've picked your crop right at its peak where everything is just beautiful by fermenting you not only add different benefits to your your food it still keeps all the vitamins or minerals that your vegetables have so don't be afraid to do this it's not going to kill it won't kill any of your vitamins and minerals plus it's a raw food it's a fermented raw food very very good for us so this is how one of the ways they used to preserve a few uh, a few years back we started to prep uh, we I got a new box of uh, peppers uh, but my other peppers are getting a little wilty now I mean I could still use it to cook but because I have those nice fresh ones what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the older wilty ones I'm going to cut them up in little bits or slices and I'm going to dehydrate them and then they're going to go into a mylar, ba a mylar bag so dehydrating is another way of preserving your food guys and it's important to have always food on hand because you never know what's going to happen. You saw what just happened to us and we're still going through it. Shortages of food. Uh, I know that things that I used to get so easy, uh, I'd have to go back and see if they have it because they don't always have it on hand. And God forbid it gets even worse than what it was. Uh, it's important to know that you have food preserved for your family at home and having some of these fermented foods and some foods that you've dehydrated I say store away stuff that are that is dry the drier the better it is uh, so drying is a good way to preserve food but this is also a nice way to do it it's going to last a long time I've had preserved vegetables in my refrigerator uh, because I ha I'm blessed to have an extra refrigerator I've had jars that were over a year old and they were just as good as the day I made them just as good especially in the refrigerator it holds everything just perfect and then this is going to go into a jar and it's going to continue doing its magic remember guys cook with love prepare foods for your family make sure that you have food always on hand for yourself never run out of food that is the worst thing that anybody can do is run out of food it's horrible to not have food on hand and we can do things that are so cheap carrots are so cheap my god but yet they hold so many delicious benefits so get yourself a couple of bags of carrots it costs you like a couple of bucks to get them and then try and do half your leaf for yourself when you cook and half maybe shove in a jar and like I said, when you're taking this out of the jar, you need so little uh, of this food. And it gives you all the benefits that any fermented food or live food will give you. So I'll see you in a little bit, guys. All right, guys. Look at this. Didn't take long. Okay, these are the bean jars that I keep. I just wash and reuse guys until it doesn't want to be reused anymore so i am going to basically use my hand let me rinse it my fingernails are completely orange you might not be able to see it but they are orange okay and it goes And you want to pack these nice. So, in. Let me just get something to push them down. Okay. See, you don't want to get any air, but eventually it'll fill up with water just gonna keep there we go making water we will add some water to it I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing I'm just kind of pushing them in you don't want to over when you're fermenting them you don't want to over stuff them 
for the reason that they will rise up and then it's going to spill all over. So we don't want to over, over stack them. I'm going to use this jar to do this other bit I have. I could have used a smaller jar, but I could change it later, so I'm not worried. Sorry, can't see what I'm doing because I'm like a dodo bird half the time. I see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to put some of this liquid in this jar. I'm going to put some in this jar. Sorry for the shakies. There we go. Get as much as I can in there. And I'm going to get just a little bit of water. Okay, guys. Let me push this aside so I can show you. This is what I mean by some of my peppers are getting a little wrinkly like me. See, they're aging like I am. Uh, I have these beautiful orange peppers. Uh, I will use some still in cooking. I might make some hummus later on. So I'm not going to dehyd all, dehydrate all of them, but they're already dehydrated on their own. So these are going to really work fast. Uh, I'm blessed to have an oven that dehydrates, but you could use any cheap dehydrator you have. And you could also store food that way. So some of these are going to get dehydrated and they're going to go into a mylar bag for uh, emergency food guys this is gonna last me god knows how many years and years and years and years so when i'm cooking or i'm making a chili or whatever i could take a handful of this stuff and throw it in while i'm cooking let it be on a campfire or just because you need it as emergency food and you're gonna have uh, food that's so full of nutrients and even though it looks like this it doesn't mean that it's lost nutrients it lost liquid it didn't lose the nutrients so i'm gonna put some of these to dehydrate that dehydrate but that will be another video guys so i am just gonna add a little bit of water to this the only water i have right now and i am gonna push that down i mean not that I, it's the only water i have the only filtered water i have and you're gonna see look at all besides the water i put i put very little guys look at this my bottle the water reaches up here i just put very little because i want to keep this salty because that is what's going to make everything ferment and it is the salt i didn't want to put everything in one jar i might be able to later on because when I'm fermenting, I don't want this to spill over on me. And I could just come here and push it. Every day, I could push some of that water, some of those carrots in there. And it's going to make more water all the time. And this will rise up. It's just going to breed, guys. That's what fermenting does. It basically uh, just breeds on you. So now, I will put caps on these so nothing could go in. And I will tighten them but i will burp them every day otherwise you'll have a mess guys there i don't want this exploding in my cabinets so that's it guys how easy was this you're gonna have the best best fermented food on this planet and this is just so simple ginger and carrots guys you can't go wrong really really good so give it a try come back let me know what you think and remember when you ferment these you could ferment them up to three days. I would say minimum three days. I know some people say, oh, no, you got to ferment them a lot longer than that. Yes, you can ferment them as long as you want. You could leave them there for a month, for two months if you want. It will just get stronger and stronger. If you're okay with that, then let it go as long as you want it to go. But my daughter likes it a little fresher, and I want her to get as much probiotics in her body as we can get in there. And we eat probiotics every day. Every day we're eating something fermented or drinking something fermented. So I'm going to make more recipes like this for you guys. Just to show you how easy it is. And you can ferment basically any kind of vegetable you have. Cauliflower, broccoli. Well, broccoli. I haven't done broccoli. I have to try broccoli and see how that goes. But cauliflower, string beans, 
uh, you can ferment a lot of delicious stuff, uh, radishes. And these are all things that you'll have on hand. We pack them in there. This is the magic jar. That's why I say put magic in your food, guys. This food here, when you open it up and you take some, it looks like you never made a dent. It looks like the same amount you started with is still there. I call that magic. So I love you guys. And guess what? I'm going to see you in another video where we're fermenting more food. So I'll see you soon, guys. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.